What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Stories Unleashed podcast. I am your host, Shay Waihe, and thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, uh, the Stories Unleashed podcast, and also check us out on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and all the other platforms. Today, we have our very first Wahine on the podcast. On the podcast, she is a very inspiring young lady who is a lawyer by profession. Um, she's your very own personal hype woman, an inspirational coach, and someone that just wants to make you be the best version of yourself. We have Mihi Tirina Sorensen. First and foremost, thank you very much for jumping on. How are you? And um, just happy that we could make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. What an introduction that was. Um... I'm happy to be here. I, like I said to you, I am very flattered and very honoured that you've asked me to join, especially as your first wahine. Um, and good on you for expanding out so that you get to hear our voices as well on top of all of the other awesome guests that you've already had. Um, I'm good. I'm excited to be here. This is like my first time as a guest on another podcast. So... Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get talking. Did um did you want to start from the beginning? Um, I know I've given you a bit of an intro there, mm -hmm. but um maybe you could just tell everyone who may not know you, um who you are, where you come from, and um just a little bit about your upbringing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so call Mahi Tarina Sorensen and talking uh call. Faktohera to ko ngati kahunu ki wairo ko ngati paho era o ke iwi. Um, yeah, I'm Mahi. I am. I live in Hawkes Bay. I am from Christchurch. I am, like you say, I am professionally. I'm a lawyer, and I love to do my podcasts on the side and. What else is there to say about me? You know how whenever someone asks you to like introduce yourself and it's like, what do you want? Do you want, do you want my whole life story? Because we could be sitting here for days if I share my whole life story, but I won't, no one wants to do that. We've only got 50 minutes. <laughs> so what should I say? I, so I grew up in Christchurch and lived in the same house with my mum and dad the whole time that I was there. My parents still live in the house that they raised me in. Um, and I went to Auckland University when I left Christchurch at 18. And I studied, I did one year studying law and health science, not because I wanted to be a lawyer and a doctor, because I did not want to be a lawyer and a doctor but I wanted at that time to get into some kind of policy level role. So I studied law and health science, did first year there. It was awesome. I met a lot of really awesome people that I'm still very much in contact with, good friends of mine, but Auckland was not it for me. Like being a poor student in Auckland Central with no car and no, like it was for me, I lost my independence going to university and living in the halls. So I had it good where I was. So that was, I lasted a year and then I came home and finished off studying my law degree at Canterbury. I completed that law degree in three and a half years, mainly because I just hated being a student. It was just not for me. So the, the quicker I could get through uni, the better I just wanted to go out into the world and be a grown up. So I did that um, at UC. While I was at UC, I started a Beyonce club. That was fun. We won Best New Club in 2016, which is pretty much our only claim to fame. Um, and I was involved with some of the Māori Law students' associations as well. That was cool. And then I did my studies for professionals. So 
my professional legal studies, which is what you need to do once you get a law degree, you need to actually study to be admitted to the bar to be a lawyer. So I finished in June 2018 and then I started profs straight away. And so in December, I was actually admitted to the bar on the Monday. Like there was like a week where I was admitted to the bar on Monday. And then on Friday, I graduated with my law degree. And so I was done and dusted at the end of um, 2018. And four years prior, I was like at my high school graduation. It was very fast. Far up. So I know it's crazy. Why I did that now, I don't know. Maybe for clout. I think possibly for clout because that's all I've got now. Because <laughs> I lost my mind. I sacrificed so much, you know, like with everything. If you want to over exceed any expectations, you need to sacrifice and you need to be willing to do that. So when I was at uni, I didn't go to any parties. I was like at home studying all the time, finishing all of my assignments like weeks ahead because I knew that's what I had to do if I was going to stay on top of my workload. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret it now. Like it's, it's awesome that I did that. And now that I know that I have that work rate in me, I've got no excuse to sit around and do nothing. But um, yeah, man, I didn't have a life. <laughs> I did not have a life for, for a few years. So yeah, so I finished um, at the end of 2018 and then I, started working as a private lawyer for a medium-sized law firm in Christchurch. I was still living at home with my parents at the time and I was doing primarily property law. So it was like conveyancing, buying and selling houses and a little bit of like a taster of stuff here and there, some commercial stuff and some family stuff. But I was miserable. It was not for me and I knew it wasn't for me and I just knew that I was wasting my life doing mm. what I was doing and in saying that I when I went to law school and I was admitted and I realized okay I'm a lawyer now what I had pictured for myself was a lawyer that goes to court and I think I don't know what people think like in in the normal world like in the real world but I feel like everyone thinks almost every lawyer is one that goes to court but barely yeah. any lawyer goes to court. Like most lawyers do not go to court. I think, I think a lot of like, people would think it's like, I don't know if you've seen the TV show Suits, but like yes. everyone would picture yes. it to be like that, eh? like glamorous and yes. keeps some money or driving around in the flashiest cars. Yes. And, you know, it's this. That like, ain't it. Okay. That ain't it. That's a scam. And I stupidly also watched those TV shows when I was in high school. And I was like, lawyers look cold like their <laughs> lifestyle looks cool they're glamorous and they get to dress up in their heels and they walk around and do you know fun things and that was not a, like being a lawyer is not that at all it is so far from that and it's especially at the start and so it was it was not it and so I think I got to the middle of 2019 and I was like I need it something needs to change and I need to go back to the reason why I started law school and the reason why I wanted to be a lawyer and despite how shallow it might be it was because I wanted to look like the cool lawyers on the tv shows and I like my favorite kind of movie and my favorite kind of show is court stuff and civil rights stuff and I'm like right I need to do something that's going to get me into court because if I stayed on the track that I was in, I never would have stepped foot into a courtroom at all in my career. So I, yeah, I did some digging and then I started and then I got a new role that happened to be in Hawke's Bay. And that was working for the government. The role came with heaps of court experience. That's what I was promised. And that is definitely what I got. Um, it did mean that I moved away from everything that I knew and everyone that I knew. And even though like, I fuck a papa to Kanganu and to Ngati Pahawera, so that's between Napier and, and up to Wairau and all the way in the middle. So I'm very much from here, but I hadn't spent any more than like maybe <laughs> one or two weeks in Hawke's Bay, like ever in my life. But I don't know. I was like you know how sometimes you just 
have this feeling like if you stay where you are you're not going to get anywhere and you're just going to get progressively more miserable Mm. and I don't even think I had that feeling consciously but subconsciously I just knew I had to change something because I wasn't I wasn't going anywhere and I wasn't going to be happy with the way that I was headed so I was like sure I'll move to Hawke's Bay I'll move to Napier and I moved to Napier like within a month and started this role in court, completely new organization. Did you know anyone when you moved or? No. So you just no. moved by yourself, not yeah. knowing anyone, not knowing the place. Yeah. That is mad. No. I know. <laughs> I know. That, and I think that's why it had to happen so fast. Like it happened within a month, me like interviewing and all of that stuff and then moving up here. It had to happen quickly because if I was left to sit and think about that for too long, I would have made an excuse to get myself out of it and stay like in my safe place at home with my parents. Um, yeah, it's chaotic. <laughs> that, that's quite funny. Like it's, well, it's funny because now I'm living in Christchurch and obviously you're living in, in Hawke's Bay. And I think exactly what you think of Christchurch um, the same way with Hawke's Bay. Like I had to get out of Hawke's yeah. Bay. Like I'd been there for, you know, my whole life, my mum and my younger brothers are still there um, with my stepdad and, I was just like, oh man, like, I don't think I'm ever going to go anywhere. If I stay here, I need to explore different cities, meet new people and whatnot. Um, and it's quite funny when I did leave school, I went to Victoria University to study law. Um, and I studied my first year and I like quickly found out, I was like, nah, this isn't for me. Like, yeah. Um, I think our lecturer said something one day, like um, he said, sometimes your personal beliefs will be different to what you have to do in the job as a lawyer. And if you can't separate your personal beliefs from what you have to do in your role, then maybe being a lawyer isn't for you. And I thought to myself, what if I believe someone is like, I don't know, I'm very shallow with like law knowledge, but um, what if I believe someone is guilty personally, but I Mm. have to defend them in, in in the court or whatever like I don't know if I could mm-hmm. separate my own beliefs so I found mm-hmm. out pretty quick that it wasn't for me have you ever felt like like that in in, in your experience as a as a lawyer and um how, how has that affected you really yeah 100 percent. I especially more so in my court role um not so much doing the property stuff because that was very transactional. There weren't really any feelings in it. It's moving money around so that people can buy homes and sell homes. When it comes to court, when you have a client that you're representing, and and I say specifically probably for criminal defense lawyers, like they are a particular kind of person. You've got to be a certain kind of person to be a criminal defense lawyer because those ones are the ones who are really good at cutting compartmentalizing their feelings and putting them to the side because ultimately when you're admitted to the bar you take an oath that you will always act in the best interest of your client whatever that looks like and yeah for me personally like when I'm representing the government one of the hardest things that I've found is especially since I've moved up here because I've learned a lot more about my whakapapa and connected a lot more with my Maori tanga and te ao Maori and all of that and working for the government and representing the government when I'm well aware of colonization and the impact of colonization it's very conflicting like Mm. my role was so and that's like higher level obviously there's lower level stuff when I don't agree with something that's happening and I have to go and somehow try to represent that position in court while also maintaining my own personal professional dignity and reputation Mm. as a lawyer as well as doing what's best for my clients but then all of the the high level real emotional stuff really deep stuff when I start thinking about colonization that was hard like that was probably more challenging and that was something that came specifically with working for a government organization and representing government interests do you um i watched another podcast uh i'm not too sure i think his name's kingy i think he might be a lecturer in auckland but um 
he spent some time over in America at Harvard University um, doing his master's degree, but he also spent some time with the Native American um, community over there. Mm -hmm. And um, I know on the reservations over there, they somewhat have the ability to, I suppose, have their own jurisdiction or they have their own laws. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought like, you know, how that would impact the Māori community if maybe iwi or hapu were able to somewhat have um, their own courts and and Māori lawyers like yourself could, I suppose, provide guidance and and um, support around that. Have you ever thought about how that would affect the Māori community? I mean, everything that is by Māori, for Māori, is better for Māori, like point blank. And that's the way that it should be. Do I think that Māori and iwi should have their own um sort of separate court system no and I feel that way because the court system is something we inherited from England that was something that we inherited through colonization so to just um use the same forum to resolve conflict for Māori is actually Mm. not the way that we you know because traditionally before colonization that's like the way that the court system works the way that the justice system works corrections the prisons that prisons didn't exist Mm. before colonization and so we have all of these systems that we've inherited that are now very much a part of modern day New Zealand society but they don't work for Māori they never have which is why statistics show that Māori are overrepresented in the prison population and low socioeconomic. That's because of all of these inherited systems. So do I believe that they, if Māori had their own systems for them, would that be in Māori's best, in, you know, in the best interests of Māori? No. Mm. Do I think Māori need to have control over their own way of life their own way of working do I think Māori need to be completely autonomous when it comes to making decisions about what happens with whānau what happens and particularly with whānau because I did a lot of my work in the family court I I have a vested interest in it Mm -hmm. I don't think that the current systems and structures that are in place have any benefit for Māori whatsoever. Mm. See, um, that's 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 quite eye-opening from someone that, you know, uh, I suppose, so my my mum my and my dad split up when, when I was young, so obviously I had to go through sort of um, a time of uh, sorting out who has me when sort of thing, and I know that put a lot of stress on both, both families, my mum and, and my dad, but I see some other whānau really just ripped 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 open really just from um this I guess the processes that they go through in the courts and um do I think there there could be a bit more of you personally yeah maybe yeah there could be a bit more of you and seeing how they could change and how it could benefit people um Mm -hmm. but I mean I, I, I don't even know where to start where that start would be would you have any idea where, where you would start or is that just a hard question I, to answer I mean it's and I I agree with you I I think the entire system I believe every system needs to be completely overturned and completely transformed like we need more than a review we've been having reviews for years and decades mm. and and I'm over it because when have Maori ever come out in a better position never mm. so I and particularly if we're talking about the courts and the justice system first problem is access Fano Māori have no access like accessibility issues to court and to the justice system huge significantly more for Māori why is that heaps of reasons it could be the distrust in government distrust in the systems not understanding Mm. the systems because they're culturally so different 
in terms of um, dispute resolution, having to go and sit before a judge and a judge makes a decision about whether or not something should happen and making these decisions for Fano, not just Fano for companies and, and all sorts of stuff, but one person having the ability to decide and that person also gets to dictate who gets a say and how much of that say actually gets taken into consideration. Like that's just, that's not at all how traditionally Māori operated. Mm. So, you know, for instance, if there was, and I'm not speaking like an expert, I don't know, but this is something that I've become so accustomed to because the conversations keep happening, which is why I'm sick of the conversations happening. Something just needs to change. Because we can talk, 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 but like someone needs to do something. Yeah. But that's a story for another day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you, I, I want to kind of move on to um, your Empower podcast too, because I know that's like such a, a big part of who you are and and, um, and I get this general sense that you really enjoy helping people is that part of the reason um, you started the podcast but is that also part of the reason you decide to become a lawyer because I, I do I do think that lawyers do somewhat help people mm. or is that you just purely for the glam and the clout um, as you said before um, no, I think it's it's very cliche, but we get asked this in law school as well to really think about what it like, simplify it. Why do you want to be a lawyer? And for me, it was always to help people. Mm. But I think the podcast was a couple of things. Starting the podcast was a few things for me. So I started it in June last year at a time where I had just come off like a week and a bit of stress leave because I was burnt out in my job and I had been wanting to do the podcast for quite a while but I'd been making excuses so that I didn't have to do it so it would be oh I don't like the setup in the house that we're in at the moment I'll just wait for us to move into the new house or um uh, I don't know like someone's gonna talk shit about it and it's gonna hurt my feelings and that's like really like and it put me off doing the podcast for like six months and then I found myself on stress leave so I had a lot of time to not be distracted with work and just be in my own thoughts and all of the excuses that I'd made before didn't exist anymore and I just couldn't make up another one for myself and I was like look bitch like you can't keep living this life making excuses so that you're not doing the things that you really want to do and it's like my biggest fear is getting to 80 years old on my deathbed and looking back and thinking why didn't I just do that like I've got so many regrets because I was too afraid to try something and usually it's because of other people's opinions but just for whatever reason like we've got one life and if I want to try something I'm going to do it and if, and if I don't do it, the only person I have to blame is myself. So, you know, like I was like, that's it. The time is now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Far. That's, that's buzzy. Cause I was kind of the same. Like I put this podcast off for ages as well. And I just thought, oh, like, I don't know what I'll talk about or, um, will people even be keen to watch it or will they even be keen to jump on? Because, you know, my podcast is primarily just, um, me interviewing guests um, and it took a day of being feeling low in, in, a, in a position of um, vulnerability um, in a position of not believing in myself to actually look at myself and think oh you know what what are some of my strengths and what are the things that I believe that I'm good at and one of those was um, I suppose connecting with different people um, despite not knowing mm. who they are or um, a a lot about them or even just being able to conversate with um, people is, is um, a strength that I think I had and eventuated was this was this podcast um, and and I followed you a bit because I've watched a few podcasts of um, that you've put out and um, on on Spotify and I got the sense that yeah that you want to help people but it's it's different to just going out and you know handing them oh I've got no sugar 
oh, I've got sugar in my cupboard or, you know, yeah. oh, do, you need, do you need a hand of that trying to pick up groceries? It's different because I don't feel like a lot of people really take the time to look at themselves and better themselves and become the best version of themselves. How have you found that, like, navigating that journey? Because I know that you try and empower people with, with, with the things that you say and um, with the advice that you give. Have you found someone that's given you that sort of empowerment or have you just looked at your own self and tried to use your own experiences to help others? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of um, like when I really sit down and take the time to reflect and I think about, which is happening a lot lately because I've just started meditating and it's really good for me. But I think about how did I get to this to where I am now and what is it where were there seeds that were planted in me that's led me to where I am so that I can speak the way that I do on my podcast because that just hasn't come from nowhere and it's it's from a few things it's a lot of it I really credit to my tipuna so my two grandmothers who I barely knew one of them passed away two months before I was born the other one passed away when I was about three or four both of them were teachers both of them very outspoken and I feel like in in some ways I've inherited a lot of that energy also my mom is started a business when I was about three or four and worked her ass off the whole time that I was growing up and I saw it and not only my mum, my dad, my dad busts his ass. He's like 73 years old, still working, still biking 11 kilometers a day to work, to work a physical job. And like, it's out the gate. And so I saw so much of that and so much of that hard work that they put in and that their parents put in because they were trying to give me the best life or the best start to life that they could give me and I'm so grateful to them for it because now it's like ignited this fire in me and it did when I was younger but it was like I am not going to waste the gift that I've been given that my parents and my grandparents and everybody before them have given me which is Oh. to bust my ass and to be the best version of myself because I know that's what they would want and I want to be able to kind of pass that energy on to everyone else and not just say if you want to have a good day do this it's like to say it's not just about having a good day tomorrow it's about having a good day every other day as well and mm -hmm. I'm not going to write your recipe and tell you to follow it. I'm going to give you the tools so that you can get it to work for you because everybody's different. Mm. But once you have that information, then you can do with it what you want. If you want to have a shit day, up to you. If you want to live a life where you're not fulfilling your full potential or not doing the things that you wish you did because you're afraid, that's on you. But mm. it's about giving people the opportunity to even have any exposure to these ideas so that they can really tap into to what they're capable of. Well, that's that's powerful because I was never one to really look at myself as well um, in terms of personal mm. development. I was just content. Nothing was wrong. So why do I need to make change it sort of thing? I was in that mindset of it's not broken. Don't fix it. Um, am I? Yeah it was my partner who's been working a lot on herself since we first met. And I just realized, well, I seen the growth, but I didn't think I needed to grow as well. And um, once I did see that growth was important and change um, can be good, I started to look a bit deeper. And um, I don't know if you know who Tony Robbins is, but we've done a, um, mm. an event with him and, <laughs> I've never I've never felt like I needed to cry because someone's so inspirational or I've never looked back at some of the memories that he made me look back at and now it's just sort of lit this fire in me to talk to more people that are interested in um, being the best versions of themselves and finding out um, what what it is that triggers them to um, to do meditation like you said to um, do reflection to set goals and help others and all these other beautiful things that you do when it comes to being the best version of yourself 
but the one thing that always um, took me by surprise was my um, or I suppose it wasn't even surprise it was this feeling of always needing to feel connected with people like um, I guess not being lonely and like mm. like gosh I struggled with that so much like um, growing up in a big family I have four younger brothers um, obviously my stepdad's in the house my my mum and then my dad he's got um, two sisters and you know my, my grandparents were always around where I was always surrounded by a lot of people um, from when I was 16 all my best mates pretty much lived with me um, which was a blessing and a curse and now that I've come into um, Christchurch where my partner goes back to Palmerston North where she's from to see her whanau and when I am alone I did feel the sense of I need to be with people I need to be feel connected what what advice do you have from your experience um, with Empower on how you deal mm. with those sorts of feelings because I know that um, feeling lonely is something that would commonly go around with other people as well mm. I have when I think back to the times um, in my life where I felt the loneliest um, it often didn't matter who was around me physically like I could be in a room full of people and they could all be there for me like and I could know all of them and just feel so empty and so alone and I think what I've learned particularly in the last few years is that when I'm lonely when I feel lonely that's an indication like that's a trigger and an alarm that my brain is setting off to tell me that I need to work on myself like I need to figure out what is causing this loneliness am I feeling unfulfilled am I feeling unworthy am I you know what's what's triggering those feelings and why do I feel that way in fact if I feel lonely it means that I kind of need more of myself rather than more of any other body around mm. me and 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 saying that having dogs helps because now I'm never lonely they are just everywhere all the time but there's still and I also don't feel that that sort of deep loneliness that I used to feel sometimes but for me personally it was always associated with the fact that I wasn't just really being who I am and I wasn't living my like a life that is authentic to me I was too busy trying to impress other people too busy chasing people for attention and it was the wrong people and you shouldn't be chasing people for attention anyway it was all of my own kind of insecurities mm. bubbling up to the surface what can we can we talk a little bit about that so um working on yourself how where did that start like what was the starting point like I know a lot of people start with podcasts or reading or meditation or even just mm. um, <laughs> New Year's, New Year, New Me sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Where did that start for you? To be honest, I think, and I think a big thing for me was being held accountable, firstly. So I, and I'm, I'm not going to credit my man too much I love him a bit but we both realize that we're each on our own individual journeys and whatever we do in terms of our own personal development comes from our, ourselves but it helps to have people around you that hold you accountable so two years ago I thought that when I went to the gym I worked hard that's really and I really believed it then you go to the gym with Shamara Brooks and this man is just like I've never seen someone bust his ass so hard as him at the gym and for me and my friends I was the one that worked out the hardest and then I'm watching him and he's like sweating everywhere and like really pushing himself and for me it really triggered something and I was like who do you think you are you really like for me do I really think that I've been working hard because now I'm looking at this and I realize I have not been, but there's just not really been anyone around me that's challenged me or like tried to, and he wasn't challenging me. He wasn't trying to outdo me. He was just doing himself. And that was when I realized, okay, right. 
I'm not going to let this 19 year old show me that he can work harder than me. And so it's become, that was, I mean, he wasn't the only source, but that was the moment where I was like, okay, you're not working hard enough, work harder. And then we'll train together and I start actually working harder and it helps because I've got him with me, holding me accountable and pushing me along and showing me what I'm capable of. This is just in the gym. Mm. And then I realized, hold on. If I thought I was working at like my peak, which I absolutely was not. And this is what I'm capable of when I've got someone, you know, encouraging me to do better and to, to aim for higher. I need to now look at the rest of my life and sort the attitude out because Mm. the attitude that I had at the gym was the same attitude that I had everywhere else. And that was kind of where it started. And then I was like, okay, well, what's important to me? I want to make sure I am living a fulfilled life. And right now I am not. And I need to be honest with myself and admit that I'm not and think, okay, well, what do I want to do? And that's kind of like, it just snowballs from there. Yeah. Well, yeah, nah, he's a, he's a bit of a hard worker. I'll give the give the bro a bit of a shout out. He's, he's a, a he's, he's a beast. <laughs> man's an athlete too. He's uh, you know, pretty good on the touch field. Not too bad on the rugby field as well. Um, make sure you add him on uh, on Insta to see his highlights because uh, yeah, nah, that man's a bit of a beast. Eh? Um, so with that, did you just sit down and really set some goals or was it just mental note? Like, okay, maybe I need to work harder at the gym. Now I can work harder and work or work harder and um, eating better. Or was it just actual quite literal? Okay. This I'm going to be this weight by this time, or I'm going to have um, eat this food for this amount of weeks. And I'm going to change to this. Was it like that or just mental It's notes? kind of like a, it was, it was kind of like a combination. So for a while it was mental notes. And then I, like when I say my whole life, like I mean it. So for a while it was mental notes. And then six months down the track, I realized, you know what? Mental notes don't do shit for me because my brain is so busy. I'm not keeping them. And so mm. then I'm, I'm looking for best productivity note-taking app and I'm finding that and then I'm keeping it in there and then I move on to the next thing because that's working well for me okay cool right next thing that I need to do is stop being such a bitch and so I start thinking about okay well why am I seeing being such a bitch what are the things that are triggering me to to react to people in a certain kind of way why you know all of that stuff it's all of the stuff that I kind of knew I wanted to change but hadn't been in a place where I was ready to look at myself that deep and as soon as I like and for a while probably one of the longest lasting ones was the people in my circle so for ages I was like I've got all of these people. Some of them I've known for a while. Some of them we used to be really close. And so I'll still kind of try to keep them around because that's, that's what I think I should do. And then actually, you know, like those people sometimes are are the reason that you're being held back or the reason that you're being a bitch. Like some of the friends that I had were assholes and so because they were assholes it made me an asshole and then it stressed me out about it and then it took up all of this mental energy and mental space that I didn't need so I had to cut it off wow that's but tough. That, again it was just a process that's tough though like um fortunate for me I, I, I've never had to really cut anyone off everyone's been doing their own thing and doing really well for themselves mm. um but I'm not gonna say any names I do know people that are um have actively had to cut people out of their lives like people that have been there Mm. you know for years and years and super duper close like um unbelievably close and they've had to cut them out of their lives for toxic traits and behaviors um and that's tough like I can't even I can that's that's real tough to be able to go through all that yeah um I know you've done a bit of a podcast on toxic um traits um just a small snippet I've seen on on your insta um Mm. do you want to talk to us a little bit about that and picking out those and other people but also maybe in yourself and yeah getting rid of them totally totally because again like the gym thing I did not think I was toxic until I had someone living with me 24-7 that was not my parents. 
and that was my partner again because we moved in like he moved into my apartment a week after he met me it was we were chaotic and I had just moved to Hawke's Bay so I was like sure I've got company and now we just live together all the time but he because I had him around me all the time and listening to the the way that I was talking and and noticing because he's very he's he has this like acute awareness he can tell when I am wound up about something and he can take it right back to the reason why I'm wound up so for example if I was being a huge bitch to him and he would call me out on it and then he would say, this is because of this. And I would say, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. And then I'd go away and think about it and have my own thinking time and be like, it is. Like, he's actually figured out what these things are that are triggering me. And it's, you know, he is the first person. And I think that's why I, it's one of the things that I appreciate in him as a partner. He's the first person to call me out on my shit. And I needed that. And I needed someone that calls me out on my shit. And sometimes I don't like it. Most of the time I don't like it. I don't like it, especially when a man is calling me out on my shit. Who is he to tell me that I'm being toxic? But he's right. And and I do the same for him as well. We really hold each other accountable. Mm. And that was sort of, prior to that, I'd been like, you're not good for me. I'm cutting you off. And I felt good about it. And I felt quite like righteous about it like I knew what was best for me sometimes you don't sometimes you don't until you have someone and not just one person often it's a few people the right people around you that aren't afraid to hold you accountable to your shit and he never said change he just said look I've noticed this and then left it with me and then it was up to me to decide okay well do I want to carry on being a bitch when someone pisses me off or do I want to carry on coming home and bringing all of the bad energy from work into my home is that what I want to do because if that's what I want to do this relationship probably won't last but I don't know how I can I can have any kind of healthy relationship with the, in the future including the one with myself mm. if I can't you know stop carrying work home with me so it's it's very much having someone or having people that will hold you accountable that aren't afraid to do it because it's hard to take that role in somebody's life to not be their yes man you know especially with girls like you want to be telling your sis that she is doing the right thing all the time supporting women's rights and wrongs but you can't like you you can't if you want people to be their best you got to hold them accountable to their dumb shit as well as all of the good stuff. I think that's so powerful too. What he said was just um, telling you that he notices something, but still leaving it with you. Cause I think mm. a lot of people um, sometimes how people bring it up to you, if there's something that they notice that isn't quite right, or they believe isn't, isn't um, benefiting you, they kind of just mm. push it on you and kind of shove you to change. And yeah. I feel like no one can really change you properly. Only yourself can change the things that you represent or even just changing yourself. Yeah. Only you can do that. Um, so that's quite powerful that he had the, um, I suppose, knowledge to know that, okay, I noticed this in you and I know that this causes this and, and blah, blah, blah. But you need to deal with that. I can't change that. You need to sit yeah. down and change that. That's that's super powerful. Um, what's what what have you learned most from your experience of um, being a podcast host? Um, in terms of, I suppose just everything because I know there's a lot that goes into it: editing, lighting. Um, oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> makeup, as we as we've seen before the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is three minute makeup. Yes. Um, what have I learned the most? I mean, technically, like all the technical stuff, I didn't know how any of that worked, any of the uploading it to the podcast host and the podcast host sends it out to everybody, figuring out how to use GarageBand because I never had to use it before. And now I use it all the time to edit my stuff. And Again, these were excuses to not start. I used these previously as excuses to not start because I, like, I don't know how to do that, but just learn. Like, 
we humans we're capable of actually just learning stuff if we're willing to put in the work and put in the time and with everything when you start anything new there's always teething issues but you just get into a habit you get into a routine and and that's been it's been really cool to do that it's also just been probably the biggest the best part about it is feeling like I'm really making the most of something that I knew I had inside me so like my parents will listen to my podcast and they like cry every time they do it's just so because then I start crying and then we're just all crying about it and it's like it's amazing and it's nice and it's wonderful but um that's it's really nice to to hear them and hear how proud they are because yeah yeah exactly because it used to be just it was like okay I finished school cool high school graduation cool uni graduation cool being admitted to the bar cool and I, I knew all of these things were making my parents proud because they were going to regardless mm-hmm. and then it's like that's it and now it's just life and I know that they're proud of me no matter what but it's nice to have something else that I've really created that they had no expectations of whatsoever um and then also the best part beyond all of that is just the fact that every time that I release a new podcast and every time that someone reaches out to me about an episode or mum will call me and say oh my god I was talking to someone today and they said that they were listening to you and you're famous you know every time that mum does that and I'm not famous by the way but that's mum stuff (laughs) it's like it's just like okay I'm definitely doing the right thing like I'm Mm. bringing all of this joy to to my parents but also getting people to think about how things are going in their life and it means something to them and if it Mm. meant something to one person I would just keep doing it Mm. because it makes me feel good and if it's if it's improving anybody else's life then it's worth doing so yeah I feel like I feel like you've got a gift in terms of the way you speak, the things you speak about. Um, and this this ain't just giving you clout. This is um, this is genuine and real. I think that this gift okay. is is um, supposed to be shared with other people. And I know I've listened to your podcast um, while dying on the treadmill a couple of times, and um, <laughs> yeah. you know while vacuuming, angry. Um, but you know it's 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 a podcast where you touch people in different ways because it makes you reflect on on um different experiences you've had and different moments you've had in your life and also i feel very um very connected to it because it's it's almost real like i know you've done a podcast recently about the stresses of the holiday season you know Mm. um christmas is supposed to be a time in my opinion shared with family um having good food having good moments and often it's it's more about the presence um i feel like sometimes Mm. it's about you know oh I need to get such and such a present or, you know, I haven't got the kids anything yet. Um, and I think it's too much about that sometimes. And it's not enough about, mm. man, how are you? How have you been? Um, what have you been up to? What's your favorite moment this year? Like just conversation with people that you love. Um, and I think when you touch on moments like that on your podcast, it really connects people with not only um, Christmas, but you and the things that you go through. So Personally, I feel like that's a gift and I just want to applaud you for that. Um, Thank you. Because like you said, if you can just help one person, then you've done your job, in my opinion. Um, totally. That's that's a bit about this podcast. I try and use people's um, stories and their experiences and, and stuff like that to help even just one person um, feel inspired to chase their dreams or feel connected with, with my guest. And if I can do that through um, this podcast, then uh, I feel like I've done my job. Um, I just want to get, um, I've got a couple more questions and then I know you've got to get, to, mm. got to get going. Um, it's okay. what, what do we need to know, um, to, to start a podcast or, cause I, I somewhat feel like it, it is kind of like starting a business. You're promoting yourself mm. and, and your knowledge. What, what do we need to know to, to start a podcast? Cause, um, there's a lot of, uh, unanswered questions yeah (laughs) um what do we need to know to start a podcast definitely 
first things first is equipment but you don't need anything flash like I got very tied up in like googling best podcast <laughs> mic and like they were like sit in the wardrobe and record from the wardrobe because that's where you get the best sound and blah 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 and I was like crazy about that for a little bit crazy about the background <laughs> crazy about all of the software and stuff and then I got over myself thank god otherwise there still wouldn't be a podcast if i was caring about all of that so it's equipment just have a mic just have a mic and a computer can, can you, you imagine can, to edit can you imagine sitting in the in the wardrobe being like oh the holiday season you know it's all about yes. <laughs> like doing a podcast in, in the in the wardrobe like that would be mad. honestly honestly and I just like sorry I don't care enough I don't even think my listeners would care enough for that <laughs> slight improvement on the sound quality like that is that is not it my time is better spent doing other shit so um yeah equipment and the podcast host thing that's going to require some googling because I had to spend a little mm. bit of time doing that but beyond all of that stuff the most important takeaway for anyone that's wanting to start a podcast just do it like just do it in the same way that it would be start a business or you know a new venture or a new project just do it and mm. there will be teething issues regardless and as painful as, as it is to admit it your first few episodes will be your shittiest they will be the worst that you will ever do and it sucks and for me as a perfectionist I kind of knew that and I pushed it to the side and I just did what I did. And I'm glad that I did because now I'm better. I'm better now than what I was before. I wasn't terrible, mm. but it was definitely my worst. But that's just the way it is. And it's only going to get better the more you do it and the more that you learn and the more that you grow from it. So you just got to start it. If you think it's going to be shit, you're going to look back on it one day and say it was shit. But that's okay because everyone does that. <laughs> yeah, it's the small ones, you know, like <laughs> my first episode was so trash I mean a, f a few of my episodes I still didn't even know how to put my um my backgrounds on my on my podcast and I don't know if you watch the Spotify logo is like not even green like you know how the bars yeah. on it are green it's like gray and it's like so ugly but now it's all good it, it looks cool now um so just be prepared to to not fail but be prepared to not have the result that you want your podcast to have right away because i mean it's so rewarding looking back at your first episode and being like Fuck, totally bro that was that was trash but now you look at it <laughs> and you're like i'm not so trash now i'm just a little bit trash yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so lastly what what advice do you have um What's the best piece of advice you could give anyone? Um, this can be in terms of your profession, from your podcast, or just in life. Um, best advice that I could give anyone would be if you ever find yourself questioning anything or feeling uneasy about anything, this is what I do if I find myself in that position. I always ask myself one question, which is that, does this really matter? like does this really matter and that needs wow. to be unpacked a whole lot wow. but you know like is this worth it does this does this matter is this going to contribute to the life that you want are you going to be thinking about it in five years time do you really need to be spending your energy here or is there something else that you could be doing instead that is like my favorite question because it always just helps me realize if I'm getting tied up even on like tiktok okay if i'm getting tied up on tiktok and i'm desperately trying to save a video and i can't save it and so i'm trying to screen record it because i really want to send it to the girls but they don't have tiktok and i'm getting all like genuinely wound up about it sometimes i've just got to be like what are you doing mm. this does not matter at all this does not impact anybody's lives go and do something that will <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's such a oh. Man, I, that's such good advice. Does it matter? There's a lot of things that um, we go through every day, and I look back at my day before I hit the hit the pillow, and I'm like, did I really care? Really care about that? That someone didn't put their trolley away at the supermarket? Like, was I that yeah. worked up about it? Driving away, thinking, oh, what a lazy yeah. guy. Like, not yeah. really, eh? To be honest, like, oh, that's so good. Um. I've got a couple, um, some quick fire questions uh, for you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
I'll just go straight ahead, straight into it. What are your top three songs yeah. in your playlist? Off the top of my head. Or, or even just, do you want me to pick up my phone? You don't you don't have to like do the actual top three, but what would be even if like you had to, just had to pick top three songs? Um at the moment, anything Doja Cat. She's really, I'm really vibing her stuff at the moment. But beyond that, and Shamara's going to watch this, he's going to laugh at me. Anything between like 2000 to 2013, R&B. And I hate to admit it, but there's a lot of Chris Brown in there. Don't yeah. wake me up. There's Usher OMG. There's Usher Climax. There's a lot of Kelly Rowland. There's obviously a lot of Beyonce and Destiny's Child. It's all of that. Like, that is all that's in my top three all the time. These days, it's like Kehlani and Chanae Aiko. It's always been Chanae Aiko and, like, the cool stuff. But, yeah, there's a whole lot of, of Mario oh. and Amarion. It's all of that. That's, that is everything that I listen to. And my poor boyfriend just get sick of me all the time so i'm not allowed to play music out loud most of the time because it's the same shit what, what's he listening to is he is he just overwhelmed with too much um r&b or is it like he's that's in the past i'm in the future now sort of i yeah i think it's very much i'm in the future now he's <laughs> you know he listens to all the lab and blah, 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 but he just gets really sick of me listening i don't, I don't know what it is it's like the music that came out when i was like between the ages of eight to 14 that was my shit like that mm. was my shit then and everything was super intense then probably like a pu puberty thing I don't know everything was real intense and everything had feelings associated with them so like that stuff is just that's my shit that's um, my jam the stuff that was playing on the year nine and ten dances <laughs> that uh, is what I live <laughs> off I'm not going to lie, though. That's like a proper good era of music. Like, I still yes. love listening to Mario. I still love listening to Chris Brown. Like, excuse me, miss. Still top top three songs of all exactly. time, in my opinion. Um, even Neo. Neo was, was the yes. man back then. Yes. Um, yeah. But... There's a bit of Justin Timberlake, even. Yeah, Justin Timberlake, he was on then, too. Who else is going around that time? Like, Oh, there was it was it was a pretty good era of music. I think a lot of people say the '90s was real good, and everyone's going to argue. Oh, you know, the '70s was better, and and um, this is better. I genuinely think that like the 2000s era though was is a lot better than this era, and that's just my opinion. Um, that's how I feel, but then but... I feel old because <laughs> that's what old people say to the kids. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling that now. Whatever they listen to. <laughs> now that I'm now that I'm teaching, like I remember I went into a True. class. I said to one of the boys, I was like, oh, one of the speech topics at um this particular speech event, I was like, oh, it was it was YOLO. And like one of the boys goes, Far, oh, bro, that's ages ago. And I'm like, bro, like <laughs> I'm only 22, relax. Like, <laughs> that's not that long ago. Far. It's yeah. like I was it's like I was only like like seven when that came out I was like fuck okay maybe that is ages ago then <laughs> but <laughs> way to feel old um yeah I reckon what's what's um your greatest achievement to date um I, I want to be cliche and just say life <laughs> just say living my life because I could say you know law school I could say finishing my law degree in three and a half years because mm. you know that's a traditional achievement that's impressive or I could say I don't know a win that I had in court or graduating but like I don't actually care about that shit like you know like that doesn't actually have anything to do with who I am besides maybe proving my work ethic mm. my greatest achievement in life is just being here and having accumulated everything that I have both positive experiences and negative experiences and all of the wonderful people that I've met and all of the terrible people that I've met because mm. it's all led me to here so that I know that was so cliche but it's true like that is my answer no that's a fair answer you've got to be proud of your life um someone mm. you look up to or that inspires you my parents 
Yeah, most people are. Mm. Um, would you rather go back in time or go to the future? Um, I would rather go back in time. To... Because I feel like... Is there a specific oh, wait, time? What? Like a specific time that you'd go back to or just in your lifetime? Um, not in my lifetime, before my lifetime. Before my lifetime so that I could meet my parents when they were my age and I could meet my grandparents and you know do all of that stuff because I don't care about the future because we've got podcasts and we've got videos and we've got everything else now so my children's children and their children and their children are gonna know what I was like at their age because mm. it's available you know I don't have that for everybody else before mm. me so that's why I would go back um What's your favorite movie or TV show? Um, Titanic. 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 Mm -hmm. That was my shit when I was eight. See, it's that time frame. And I will just never let it go. Closely followed up by Pearl Harbor. Closely followed up by anything court related, civil rights related. The other day we watched A Time to Kill, which is a classic, but very upsetting as well um you don't mind the sinking ships do you <laughs> i love the sinking ships i started playing the violin because i watched the titanic and then i quit after like six months because that was not my shit uh, i i watched um i've watched the titanic before i've watched it twice i showed my partner it when we first got together um and stupidly um I watched it a week before I went on a cruise on a, on a cruise ship. Wow. Um, uh, wow. Not the best uh, decision I've made in my life. Um, I thought, ah, oh, it won't matter. Like I won't care sort of thing. And, and so I watched the sinking ship Titanic go down. And then one of the days we had a big storm on the ship and I just, <laughs> I'm sitting there. Oh, I don't want to be Jack. <laughs> I don't want to be Jack. So um, if you ever go on a cruise, don't watch, don't watch that before you go. It's not a, good movie to watch i don't need to watch it i know it off by heart because <laughs> i've watched it that many times but that, yeah anything real life that's my shit um and last question if you're stranded on an island by yourself what are three things you would want to have with you it can be people um, as well it would definitely be shamara brooks because because I love him, but also because he is everywhere that I am intellectually book smart, he is street smart. I need him to do things for me because I don't know how to do stuff. Stuff like, this is ratchet, I can't believe I'm admitting it. I don't know how to light a fire, like in a house. I did not know how to do that. But, and he obviously maybe most people know how to do that but I never had to because we had air conditioning you know and electric heaters so you know so if I don't know how to light a fire in a house how am I going to light a fire on an island yeah yeah there, you know there's not much air con going around in the bay to be honest surprisingly like no I I, no. I took my partner back and we went to go to bed and I turned on the fan the circle fans and she yes. was like we're not we're not going to sleep with that on are we and I was like it's the only way we'll be able to sleep like in Hawks because yeah. it's like it's still 30 degrees at like 10 o'clock at night yeah so yeah I don't know what's up with Hawks Bay houses there's just not a lot of air con so I can see I can see it's... why because there's a lot of air con here in Christchurch <laughs> yeah see and and you know what he'd love me anyway so it would be him and then I guess it would be matches to make his job a bit easier um and what else do you need not my phone um, um um actually no I lie not the matches cut the matches it would be Shamara Brooks and our dogs that's what I would bring with me to the island well you could hunt with the dogs I'm sure in, that's I'm sure it. And he can, can you know he can manage that yeah he can manage all of that and i can just he can build the hut you can decorate chill. the hut that's it yeah yeah <laughs> he's so trusty i we would be okay if i had him and then 
and then the dogs can come to keep me company and well he is building too we'll see how he, long so. it lasts he's, he's roofing yeah he's roofing oh yeah, so mm. i'm sure he's pretty handy with, on the tools so he could build you a, a little safe hut until you find enough wood to build a house and then i suppose yes. the way you are <laughs> yes <laughs> no i just want to say um thanks very much for jumping on today it's like been a pleasure to speak to you and learn a bit about you and um your journey i'm sure a lot of people would um take a lot out of this podcast um you're just so Thank inspirational you. and as i said before you've got a gift in, in speaking and and um, providing advice and helping people be the best version of themselves empowering people no pun intended but um i hope i hope that you just continue to use your voice to to create change in others and and continue to be the best version of yourself. So yeah, thank you for jumping on. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Shay.